Thanks, Leo, for an excellent lecture. Could you tell us what epigenetics is? Epigenetics are essentially the molecular switches that tell us where, when a gene is on or off. There are small chemical changes, not on, on the DNA sequence itself, but on top of that. And they can tell us whether a gene is active or not active. And where do these, where do these happen? Do they happen in the brain? Do they happen in the blood? They, they, happen, they happen everywhere. They happen in all of the cells in our body. Just to give you an example, of our, all of our cells have the same DNA. They have the same, uh, gene, the, sa the same genes, but they are all very different in their functions. And epigenetics is exactly what tells them to do different things. A brain cell will be a brain cell. A blood cell will be a blood cell. So, I mean, genetics is our sort of code uh, made up of DNA. So epigenetics is somehow altering that, is it? Exactly, exactly. So epigenetics is telling the, the code what to do, when to be active, when not to be active, in which part of our body okay. to work and which not. And what factors affect epigenetics? What we think is really the interaction between the genetics itself, the underlying sequence, will, will affect how active a gene is or not, but also a lot of environmental factors, early life stress, starting from early on in life, a lot of lifestyle changes, midlife, but also aging itself, we know, affects the epigenome and, and tell us, can give us a lot of things that happen. Yeah. So how does ageing affect it and you know, is it good or bad as we get older? Well, it, it seems to be different. Whether it's good or bad, we don't really know. A lot, of, a lot of work describes it as aberrant epigenetic changes. Some places in our genome get, get more methylated when we look at this particular uh, mechanism. Some other places lose it. And in a, lot, a lot of times it does seem to be a bad thing that the changes that happen during aging have been studied a lot in cancer, but we start to, start to study them in dementia as well. And it does seem that what happens in aging in our epigenome could be causing some of the problems that come as we get older. So do you think that the epigenetic changes might somehow predispose us to develop cognitive impairment and dementia? And that, that's exactly what we are studying. We have been doing some work over the last few years and we wanted to understand that better, whether epigenetic changes actually make us have memory problems, make us get diseases that come with aging. And what's your hope if we study this and understand the changes more? What might the epigenetic changes, you know, help tell us about dementia or its treatment? Well, there are, there are two things that we really try to do. One of the things is we, it might help us diagnose things earlier on. For example, we know with dementia, one of the problems we have is that we diagnose it quite late. Perhaps by, by doing some, some more refined tests, we can know earlier on. And obviously, we know that it happens earlier on. We can try some treatments on time, but epigenetic mechanisms themselves can change, can be affected by a lot of tablets, a lot of medications, and perhaps give us some clues on, on how to treat certain things that happen with aging. Okay, so it, so it might be some uh, a marker that might help us to diagnose people earlier and more accurately, but it might also give us insights into, into new treatments and how yeah, they work? Yeah, exactly both and in an ideal work perhaps we could it could also tell us whether a treatment is working early on or not if, if, if the treatment is affecting the epigenetic changes and we can read them and see them altered perhaps we can use that as a, as a readout as well and i think some of your work that you're just starting now is looking at these changes in in lewy body dementia could you say a little bit about that as you know very well lewy body dementia is probably the second most common type of dementia in older people and we know very little about it. We try to, to, to explore and study epigenetic mechanisms in Lewy body dementia, looking both in the blood of people with Lewy body dementia to see if we can pick up any differences in their peripheries, but we also look at brain tissues from people with Lewy body dementia and compare them how they are different to people who did not have dementia. And in the studies in the brain, are you looking within the whole brain or are there certain cell types you're looking in or certain particular regions of the brain? Within the brain, we are developing a very novel method. It's, 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 it's a very complex one. It's called laser microdissection. We are essentially looking into neurons that have the pathology, the Lewy bodies, and try to compare them with neurons, brain cells that don't have the pathology. And by, by checking how 
brain cells that have, have the problem compared to brain cells that don't have the problem, if we can understand the process a little bit more and find new ways of stopping it. And I guess it, ideally there'd be a marker in the blood that would be linked or correlate with the marker in the brain so that some of the future yeah. things we were talking about in terms of diagnosis could be done in the blood, is that, is that exactly, possible? Exactly, that's, that's what, what we are trying to understand with the ongoing work and what we try to focus in the blood is the infl inflammatory processes, so how our body responds to any kind of infections or any other processes, whether those might be important in dementia as well and whether we can pick those up. So Leo, obviously for these studies, particularly those involving looking at changes in blood, you need volunteers to take part in the research. So if people want to volunteer to take part, how, how could they do that? Yeah, it's, it's very important to get as many people as we can because trying to find something that will help us, we really need as many people as possible. A lot of the data we have is from, from volunteers who came and spent their time gave us some of the blood, went through brain scans and obviously ultimately donate their brain tissues as well. It's very, very important resource for future research. At the moment, we are trying to recruit people through various platforms. For example, the Joint Dementia Research Platform is an online. People can sign up, give their details, and then researchers who are approved and have the authorization to access this data for their studies can contact them to, to recruit them to the, those very important studies. In Cambridge and in the, in the east of England region, we are very lucky to have the Windsor Research Unit, which is a facility within our Cambridge and Peterborough Foundation Trust that can help recruit patients into research studies. Thanks very much. It's a fascinating field and I wish you all the best with Thank these you very, very much exciting studies. Thank you very much for all your support.